Greetings from SNS Cycle in Viola, Wisconsin. In this video, we're going to show you how to install an SNS Super E carb on a Harley Davidson shovelhead engine. We're going to use this 1977 FXE, the Hog of Steel, as a guinea pig. Shovel heads were introduced in 1966, and they were used in big twin models until the middle of 1984. And of course, there were several versions over the years. But installation is pretty similar on all of them, and we'll show you the differences as we go along. The first thing you want to do is throw away these pesky instructions, right? Wrong. If you've never installed a Super E carb before, those instructions will tell you step by step how to do it. But you've got to read them. This is Dennis, our award-winning tech writer. Won an award for the K-Bob Owner's Manual, you know. He's brokenhearted because you didn't read your instructions. Now, aren't you ashamed? So, we'll say no more about it. Just read your instructions, or there's going to be trouble. In order to install a new SNS carb on your bike, you're going to have to remove the stock carb and manifold. We aren't going to take up your time with this step because taking stuff apart is easy. Getting it back together right is the trick. So the stock carb on this engine may have been beamed up by aliens and sold to the Jawas for scrap. It doesn't matter because we won't be needing it anymore. The SNS kit contains everything you'll need. So let's get started. One thing you may need to buy depending on the year of your bike is a set of throttle cables. Prior to the 1981 model year, a single cable throttle control was used. Since this bike is a 1977, we've updated the throttle cables. To save time in this video, we've installed the SNS throttle grip and cable kit to convert this bike to a two cable system. A single cable pulls the throttle open, but only the two cable system allows you to pull the throttle closed in case it sticks. For older bikes that originally came with the stiff internal throttle wire, we have this steel bushing that will increase the diameter of the handlebar from 7 eighths of an inch to the 1 inch required for the SNS throttle grip. This is required for stock handlebars for bikes up to about 1973. The air cleaner backplate comes unassembled, so we might as well put that together now. The first thing we'll do is to install the enrichment lever. The parts are all in this bag. We just put the parts on in this order. First is a bent spring washer, followed by a plain steel washer. Next is a nylon friction washer. Place the enrichment lever itself over the cast emboss and over the friction washer. One more friction washer. And finally the stepped washer with the step going through the slot in the handle. Put a drop of Loctite on the screw and screw it in. Since this is a 1977 model, the crankcase breather is not routed into the air cleaner, so we install this pipe plug in the rear hole. For 1980 through 84 engines, we would install this 90 degree fitting in the rear hole and attach the stock crank breather line to it. We'll leave the front hole open because the support bracket will bolt on there. For later models, 1979 through 84, we would plug the front hole with the pipe plug provided in the kit because those engines require a different support bracket that does not use this hole. We'll set the backplate assembly aside for now and it'll be ready when we need it. So let's move on to the intake manifold. Shovel engines use two different styles of manifolds to fit the two different styles of heads. From 1966 to 1979, they came with what we call O-ring heads and used this manifold. The cylinder heads were machined the same way as the manifold, so when the two came together, they form an O-ring groove. An O-ring fits in the groove and seals the manifold. This sealing method is pretty foolproof and very durable. From about 1979 to 1984, shovels came with what are called rubber band style heads and used this manifold. Again, the manifold and heads were machined the same. But these manifolds are sealed by this rubber band. It's very important to make sure the carb with this system is well supported, otherwise the rubber bands tend to split and leak if the carb can move around and stress the rubber band. Being a 1977 model, this bike has O-ring style heads, but it's best to check before you order a carb kit, because the newest shovel engines are pushing 30 years old, and there are very few of them that haven't been modified in some way, so it's not a sure bet that your bike has the original heads. Inspect and clean the intake ports with solvent or brake cleaner to provide a good sealing surface. If the port is damaged, it's a good idea to get it fixed. Otherwise, you run the risk of having intake leaks. 
Intake leaks will cause an erratic idle and will make adjustments difficult. Extreme leaks can cause engine damage. It's pretty easy to just put the O-rings on the heads with the clamps around them and gently wiggle the manifold legs into them. Band manifolds work about the same way. Keep in mind that you want to position the clamps in such a way that the tightening nuts are accessible. You'll thank yourself later. Snug the clamps on, but don't final tighten them yet. We may need to adjust the position of the manifold slightly when the carb is installed. If the bike is a 1966 through 1979 model, this is the support bracket you would use. This bracket bolts between the rear of the front rocker box and the front of the air cleaner backing plate. Let's just bolt it to the rocker box now using this short cap screw and a little Loctite. This is the bracket used for 1980 and later engines. These later shovels did not have the tapped hole in the front rocker box cover, so this bracket bolts between the center crankcase stud and the bottom mounting bolt of the manifold. The kit for later engines includes a slightly longer manifold bolt to accommodate the extra thickness of this bracket. The longer bolt goes through the bottom hole in the manifold. Before we install the carb, let's just confirm that it's still set at the initial factory settings. Screw the idle mixture screw in until it seats lightly and turn it back about one and a half turn. Screw the idle speed screw out until it no longer is touching the throttle stop. Then turn it in till it just touches and one half turn more. Turn the accelerator pump screw in until it seats lightly and then turn it back out two full turns. These settings will allow the bike to start and run so you can warm up the engine and make final adjustments. Now we install the throttle cable guide. Put a drop of Loctite on the pan head screw supplied with the throttle cable guide and screw the bracket to the carb. Hook the barrel ends of the throttle cables into the throttle wheel of the carb. The one with the spring is the closing cable and it goes in the rear hole. Gently pull on the outer cable to get enough slack to fit the cable housing in the ferrule on the cable guide. And repeat for the opening side cable. Install the supplied O-ring in the insulator block. Set the manifold mounting screws in the bolt holes in the manifold and put the insulating spacer block on the bolts with the O-ring towards the manifold. Hold the carb up to the manifold and turn the screws into the carb using a long T-handled ball-ended Allen wrench. Adjust the throttle cables to remove excessive free play but not so tight that the throttle sticks open. Open the throttle all the way and let it go. The throttle must snap back every time. Your life could depend on it. When you install the fuel line, you can start from either end. Since this bike has a dandy little custom fuel line holder to keep the line away from the hot stuff, we'll start from the carb. Slip the end of the fuel line on the nipple of the carb. A little oil will help this go on easier. Swivel the 90 degree fitting on the carb to the best position to route the line to the petcock. Cut the hose to the correct length so that it easily reaches the petcock without kinking. Slip the protective fuel line covering over the fuel line and cut it to length if needed. Connect the fuel line to the petcock. Make sure that the fuel line doesn't contact any hot engine parts and position the protective covering where contact could occur. Connect one end of the supplied overflow line to the nipple on the bottom of the carb bowl and route the line behind the rear pushrod tubes and down behind the engine. In the unlikely event that the fuel inlet needle doesn't shut off the flow of fuel, the overflow hose will direct the gas away from the hot engine parts. Next, the air cleaner backplate. Install the gasket to the backplate and install the screws in the backplate through the gasket. Hold the backplate up to the carburetor and fit the notch in the enrichment lever into the groove in the enrichment device on the carb. Attach the backplate to the carburetor. Check that when the enrichment handle is lifted and pushed down, that the enrichment device moves freely and goes all the way down. Tighten the backplate screws to 5 to 7 foot pounds. Notice that the backplate screws have a locking patch pre applied. If you remove these screws and reinstall them, be sure to put some Loctite on them. 
if one of these comes loose, it can get sucked into your engine, and that would be bad. These thick washers go between the bracket and the back plate. If it's too loose, you need to add another washer to take up the slack. If it's too tight, you can substitute a thinner washer. Insert the mounting bolt so the head of the bolt seats in the recess in the back plate. The bolt goes through the shim and the support bracket. Put the washer and nut on the other end and tighten it up. Put the air filter on the back plate. Stretch it slightly towards the rear and hook it over the tang at the 9 o'clock position to hold it in place. Apply some blue Loctite to the Phillips head air cleaner cover screws. Hold the teardrop cover in place and line up the holes. Screw it on with the three screws and tighten them up. Now that the carb is in position, tighten the manifold clamps. Turn on the fuel petcock and check all connections for leaks. Correct any fuel leaks before attempting to start the bike, because burning your bike up is no fun, especially since you could go up with it. A final check before we start it up. Turn the handlebars to the extreme left and right and check the throttle. The throttle must snap shut every time when it's released. So that's how an SNS Super E carb is installed on a shovel head engine. Super G carbs are installed in exactly the same way. The only difference between the two carbs being the diameter of the manifold and the carburetor throat. To keep these videos at a reasonable length, we aren't going to talk about adjustments or jetting here. We have several other videos available that show initial setup and jetting procedures, and we invite you to take a look at them. Of course, if all else fails, you could read the instructions. A word of caution, if you're not confident that you can perform this installation correctly, we strongly urge you to seek the assistance of a professional mechanic to ensure your safety and your satisfaction with this product. For more information on the products featured here, please head to our website, denniskirk.com.